Yes, 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 yes. Happy New Year to the members of the crew, the Sunday Scoops crew. Happy and New Year, Richie. Happy New it's Year. It's another PG. Sunday. And if it's Sunday, it's it Sunday, Scoops. Sunday Scoops. Welcome to another year, 2021. And uh, today we're featuring part two of the Channel One story, the Hukim Brothers, Joseph, Ernest, and... Uh, we're just happy to have Doc here. I tell you, Happy New Year, Doc. <laughs> Respect. Yeah. Happy New Year. Well, what is that? A New Year's beard? Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beard. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to. Oh, to you are. I, 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 oh, oh, you for, this no, thing. what I'm doing was prepared for the, the Santa Claus thing, no, the yard, and then the Prime Minister. <laughs> yeah, the Prime Minister <laughs> man, man Christmas. Christmas. Just like they did in England. <laughs> yeah. Bridgen, it's good, good to, to see you. you. Absolutely. Yeah, man, as, good to see as Pitbull you. says, every day above ground is a good day, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Doc, last, the last time we were together, we were looking at the work of Joseph, the Hukim brothers, right? One of, um, because it, it wasn't just Joseph, although he was the one who started. But we're looking at the Hukim brothers and yeah. Channel One Studio in particular, yeah. and the role that Channel One Studio played in the development of Jamaican music, particularly yeah. after 1972. Um, they, they were around not for a very long time, but their impact was significant. And I think what we want to yeah. do, before we, just to get the party started, um, let's take a look, a quick step back. Um, Mr. Big G, you are the man at the Wheels of Steel, right. and let's run uh, you know, a couple pieces, just bits and pieces of some of the songs we we touched on last week, in the last time we were here, in particular the Mighty Diamonds, because I, I think, Doc, you will agree with me, that the Mighty Diamonds was a good jumping off point for um, Channel One. Agree? Uh, 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 yeah, man. So, Absolutely. So let's Absolutely. take a quick uh, rerun, God. Um, uh, of some of the hits that, yeah. that, 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 that kind of put Channel One Studio on the, um, on the forefront. And then we, we bring, bring in the discussion. And right also, um, which created that word, rockers. Yes, yes. yes those were, well, we, we'll run through. We'll run through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Six. What? <laughs> is that, that is what you call, dark, that's what you call a cut and rinse. <laughs> Yeah, well, you might, yeah. you might, as a little yes. youth when your mother said, you and need please. your beard? And you say, yes, mama. Yeah. And she, when she come and say, touch, touch your back. Touch your back. I see back dry. A quarter of flash thing. But, but that was just to yeah. give, you know, the listeners a little taste. And I'm, I want to just use the opportunity to say to our viewers and listeners out there that um, we are going to be shifting from Facebook in another couple of minutes and we invite you to um, just join us on yardmedia.com where you can watch the entire program um, or you can uninterrupted go on forward slash old school rules and that's O-L-D-S-K-O-O-L-R-U-L-E-Z yeah, and um, to enjoy a listening experience yeah but let me let me just make the point yardmedia.com and you can watch the entire program uninterrupted, um, uninterrupted. so doc Channel One, as a man who yeah. have studied yeah. this thing, we, uh, well, all of us have lived the era of, this era of Jamaican music. Um, you know, picking up off where we had left the, the discussion the last time we were here. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the significance of Channel One to the development of Jamaican music. Your, your thoughts? Uh, the, the, I think, although we focus on the Hukim brothers, uh, which was three of them, and then they had uh, some, some, some other family, extended family members that, uh, that, that were around at the time, you know, people who were playing on the sound system and all of that, and helping with the running of the studio and stuff. But I, I think we should highlight uh, two set of creatives. Mm -hmm. the musicians and the engineers and I'll go down the list of some of the, the, the really great engineers that were part of that uh, storage studio uh, 
the first one would be Barnabas, then there was Brutal Soji Hamilton, then there was uh, Peter Chemist, then there was uh, the great scientist Overton Brown, and uh, uh, there was, I think, uh, Maxi, can't remember his, his full name. But there were some really good engineers, and including one of the Oaken brothers himself. I think it was Ernest who was one of the, the engineers. And they, they, they developed a sound and a quality on that 16 track, uh, multi track recorder, and that 16 track board. It was an API, I think it was an API board. And they had some sound effects and stuff which they used to, to great effect. Now we look at the, the musicians. Uh, primarily, there, 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 there was a couple set of musicians who used to pass through. In the early days, Soul Syndicate used to utilize it. That was people like Earl Chinna Smith, uh, Tony Valentine, Santa Davis. However, the, the, the real music, the group of musicians, that really put a stamp on Studio One, where they, what we call, as we mentioned earlier, the revolutionaries. And they were the, the basically the, the, the studio band. And like all group band in that time, studio recording band, it was a, a hodgepodge. There were some basic people who was always there, but you had musicians used to pass through. So you have Leroy, Hosmout, Wallace, Calter, Santa, Santa Davis, in terms of drums, in terms of keyboards, you have the the the, 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 the legendary Ansel Collins, you have Tarzan Nelson, in terms of guitar, Dougie Bryan, in terms of uh, percussion, Sticky Thompson, then you have people like uh, Scully, in terms of horn, you have the legendary Tommy McCook, Herman Mark, Kevin Gordon, all of these people. Chinna Smith was another person who used to pass through and Tony Chin. And then uh, as a, another bass player apart from Robbie Shakespeare was Ranchi McLean. And of course, the, 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 I would say the, the, the most important member of that aggregation in terms of innovation and creativity would have been slide on bar on drums because he developed a particular style of drumming and a particular style a tempo of reggae music that was totally different from what was out there before during this period i would talk i got mentioned it earlier the, the rockers uh style some people call it the, the four beat, some people call it straight four, and some people just call it the, the rocker style, which is a more up-tempo kind of vibe, uh, and which was a departure from the, 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 the slower one drop with the accent on the third uh, beat of the major. So it is, it is really important. There, there is this, as, as I say in my... Uh, theory of Jamaican music production, which is called the Creative Echo Chamber. Uh, uh, there are three aspects to it, we call, and one of the aspects is repetition. And repetition was the order of the day at the Channel One studio because, uh, quite controversially and with some kind of strife, they, re they, they covered a lot of the old rhythms of the, this, the, this, the 60s and early 70s uh, and and so they used to use a lot of uh, re remaking songs from the coxon arsenal in particular and 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 this was part of the kind of mechanism and methodology that really served the, uh, Jamaica well in terms of our music and this is where also the repetition of utilizing the dub aesthetic which was the manipulation of the instrument with echoes and delays and flangers and and uh, you know um, that sort of, 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 of reverb that sort of manipulation which was developed by Errol Thompson, Lee Scratch Perry 
and of course the legendary King Tubbies. That's where the dub aesthetic really manifested itself in the music, in the regular music itself. And uh, it translated into the dance hall. So, so I would say that, again, Channel One was really, really critical in the movement of the music. It was the, like, the, the laboratory for early dance hall music. And uh, sometimes it's not given the kind of, of credit that it deserves. The, the, just, you know, because one of the criticism that I, I hear some commentators level at, at um, particularly slight um, is, you know, yeah. that they, 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 they which, which sort of speak to one of the points you made about recycling a lot of the studio one rhythm. There, there are a couple of factors yeah. that were at work in Jamaica at the time. One was the absence of any kind of copyright mechanism. And, and so all the, the, the participants in the industry at the time were basically doing the same thing. They, you know, it was not mm -hmm. uncommon for an artist to record a song at one studio and then would go over to another studio and do the same song uh, all over. Um, minor adjustments in terms of the beats and so on. And uh, because the, the, the lack of copyright facilitated that. The other criticism too is that um, I think when Sly came into the business he was never seen as a as a serious player, a, a, a serious um, a musician per se because he came from the club circuit playing a wooly um you know they, they would take the, the R&B coming top from 40. North America, right and, and so on which in my opinion is 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 a mistaken assessment because it tells you that if the man yeah. can make that kind of transition to that kind of music caliber uh, he, they, right it, well it, you know what it does is that it increases his own ability to contribute to the development of the music here but i don't want you yeah. you know just process that but we want to run a couple more quick tunes and then we come back and and we carry that that point and, well, and, and these songs that i'm about to play okay. basically highlights the dance hall feel in the 80s as to what doc just mentioned yeah. Doc, over to you you just we were just talking about that the, the dub element and the role channel one and yeah. God basically yeah. set the thing up now for you to, to expound. Over to you. Yeah, well, as, as, as I said, uh, it, 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 is a, the, it was a kind of laboratory in terms of experimentation. For, and, and, and a lot of other producers used the, the studio, especially in the early part of the dance hall development, dance hall music development, the part of the, the music that I call the analog dance hall. So people like Nine Holness used to be there, Bonnie Lee used to do songs there, Yabby Yu, who was more like a roots producer still, you know, and worked with people like Michael Prophet, and he, he recorded him as, as an artist himself. And then there, there was the really important producer Henry John Jalaz from the Volcano label, the sound and, and the label, who really was one of the fathers for me, along with Sugar Minot, of modern, modern dancehall dance music. Yeah, and they started the analog period working with people like Michigan and Smiley, Yellow Man and all of that. And, in the, and, and this was just a little after the real peak of Channel One, uh, uh, the, stu the, the label itself, because their, their major success was in the 70s. And, and it continued a little bit in the early 80s. And, uh, you know, they were linked with the Mighty Diamonds, who their album that they produced for the Mighty Diamonds was the first album that J Virgin took. But right. what they did was to they, they, I think they did some overdubs. They moved it from a 16-track uh, project to, to a 24-track and had some other stuff. Uh, needless to tell you that that experimentation with, with, with Virgin was a total disaster. They tried to, <laughs> to shape the term 
turn uh, diamonds into something that they weren't. Right. They gave them a producer called Alan Toussaint. <laughs> yes. Alan Toussaint is from <laughs> Jamaica for a song called When the Party's Over, mm -hmm. which is more like yes, an R&B tune. Alan Toussaint. I think yeah, Toussaint, Alan Toussaint took them... Was one of it, yeah. He took Alan, them down Alan to thing there. Doc, down to... Bahamas. Right. Um, I think they did yeah, some yeah. work in New Orleans first, and then they went yeah, to the Bahamas. Yeah, yeah. That's where he, he, he was. He was based. Right. And and he was famous not only as an R and B singer, but as a as a as a as a you know one of those traditional uh, black music artists. You know the, the the rhythm and blues style. You know along the line of Professor Long here, and 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 Roscoe Gordon. So he that that was that was that, that, that period. Was a disaster. For reggae music. Yeah, man, disaster, man. Waste of time, man. You know, uh, again, it's just that, it's that not understanding entirely the, 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 the motivation for Jamaicans to do what they did. And then we, on the, and then the mus Jamaican musicians, on the one and the other hand, not understanding what it took to be uh, a mainstream kind of artist in a different market. And so it, it just never worked. And we see a time and time again, even in the 90s, it, it, they tried it again and it just never worked the way it, it, it should. Right. So they, 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 it, I, I, want to, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to overemphasize the importance, but it is critical to know that without what, without what the Channel One guys were doing, and when I say not only the Ukim brothers, but Sly, and the engineers in particular, scientists, Peter Chemist, you know, Bonnie Tom Tom, forget Bonnie Tom Tom. They were so uh, important that most of them had individual dub albums, you know. Bonnie Tom Tom had an album, Maxi had one, uh, and, and, and Scientist had one. I think Barnabas had one. Barnabas was very famous for his drum splash. I think, I'm not even sure if Soja Hamilton never had one too. All right, you know, Doc, uh, hold that point. We, we, we open a little break and um, yeah. we're going to come back. We want to come back with a couple of quick songs and then we want to develop on that very same point you make. And I also want to revisit the same argument about Sly coming from that playing oh, yeah, yeah, concert that. music thing because yeah. that's a very significant that's part of the thing. Let's go yeah, to break. Yeah. Hold it. Yeah, down. those who just played three Barrington Levy, all of them the original Channel One mixes before they were redone later on yep. give you a faster more dancehall feel but these were the original mixes yes doc yeah so yeah so let's go to sly because i think that is important and then we can move back to the other point but the the, the thing is uh, anybody who believes that a musician who used to play in the nightclubs or on the north coast for that matter is 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 that kind of detracts from them being an uh, authentic reggae uh, player. That's, that is absolutely crazy. Okay, that, In fact, the better musicians, the better musicians are the ones who are very versatile. All, them, all of the legends, you know, remember, none of them never to stick to ska. The, 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 the original musicians in the studio system were all schooled at the highest level in reading music and playing music and all types of music from classical to jazz in fact they were trained in jazz and all of that and and when they were at places like the alpha, this boy, alpha school. boy school they, they, listen I, I i went to holy family high uh primary school in the 60s and every that that's down at law street and every christmas we had a treat where you know santa claus come and we get food and toys and stuff but the entertainment was from the Alpha Boys band. So, at, at a, as a little boy, I was probably being exposed to some of the greats. And not even and know it, eh? even know. There you go. You know? And, but the thing is, when they came, the point I'm trying to make, when they came, they played from music sheets. And then put up the music thing and then just play in an orderly fashion. No, again, you, uh, when you play, when Sly used to play a tit for tat, or say, for instance, uh, a, a, a man like a Benji Myers now who used to play in the hotel circuit. And so many of them used to play in the hotel circuit. 
You have to be versatile. You have to can play funk. You have to can play soul. You can play mental. You can play reggae. You can play calypso. It's versatility. Anybody who is just schooled on one genre of music is not going to be a complete musician or a very creative musician for me. So to say that, you know, because they used to, that's where they, they, they learn the chops and that's why they can integrate. And as uh, while we want to t talk as if reggae just came out of a Jamaican experience, it, it, it did not. Because a lot of influences came from jazz, it came from R&B, it came from rock music. No guitar was playing, no blues style or no uh, rock style prior to, 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 to the Catch a Fire album. No, that is a, that is a critical part of any reggae band. No. But it never used to be. Synthesizers and, and keyboards. Uh, apart from a piano or the organ, we never had any synthesizer sound. Again, that was introduced in a big way because of the the same album, Catch a Fire. So I I see the the, the greatness of Slide On Bar and and the kind of in innovation that he, he he introduced to Jamaican music as a direct um, consequences. A uh, consequence of his involvement in, in playing and being schooled in all kind of different genres. The guys they move like a AJ Brown, like a Freddie McGregor. Freddie McGregor tell me say they used to have to because he used to play in a band too. Right. And Fred said he never did know that the Temptations was 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 uh, a group or the Stylistics and Delphonics was a group. Him think he's one man. So you have to learn all of the parts. You learn the falsetto part, you have, you have learn the tenor part, and you learn the, 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 the baritone part. And they, that's why they can, that's why our singers are so sometimes but so the, the range. A man, a man like all of Johnny Osborne. Johnny Osborne is a sing -G. Him have a falsetto tone. And him have another, him have, him have the harmonic, soulful type of, of, of stuff. So in, in my, in, in, in academic work, we call this process of learning from, from records, just listening to records of other people and then adopting the style. We call it phonographic uh, dissemination, you know. So uh, I, I would uh, just dismiss that kind of an uh, uh, assessment that, you know, because there, there is no authenticity in, in terms of originality or origin in t uh, uh, in, for any music at all. Well, every music, especially black music, borrow from each other. It is it's just one music, basically, you know. Just but different you, ways of expression. The, absolutely. That phonographic, what do you call it? Dissemination. Phonographic dissemination. dissemination. I, I, yeah. um, I need to make a note of that term. That, that is a yeah. $50 term. US dollar to it, not a little <laughs> cheap term. Yeah. But, but yeah. seriously, you know, it, it's, uh, it, and, and this is the role that we want to play here at Sunday Scoops, where we, it's about looking into the music. I mean, there's a whole heap of criticism leveled at, at Sly and Robbie about the issues with taxi and, you know, them take away people work and all kind of thing. Jamaica music is an, its development is an evolutionary process. But mm -hmm. we wanna, we wanna, we, we, we're gonna come back again to that. But let's look at yeah. some of the music that, again, was coming out of the era. You made a point about the 70s and then we moved into the 80s. God, you, 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 yeah. you wanna make a point. Well, just before that, I was gonna say that um, a couple years ago, I was on barnesandnoble.com and I was looking at a track from the who and then i just happened to click on discography and then i realized sly and robbie name and then i click on their name and when i looked at the discography of the catalog of people that they have played for from rock groups down to reggae groups it is vast yeah. i mean i'm looking at names like tina turner i'm looking at bob cindy i'm looking at cindy Lop. i'm looking at all these names i'm like Joe Cotton. what yeah. The, the, the problem with us, Doc, is that we, to a large extent, Jamaicans in general tend to take the stuff yeah. that we develop. We take it for granted. It's like it's like sunshine and, and seawater. It did it. Yeah. So we yeah. don't really, 
we don't pay it, we don't treat it with any kind and, and, of respect. It's almost as if and, it it will go always be there. Until, you know? until yeah. you take a vacation in Buffalo, New York, and the snow in the middle of gizzard, of, right? And then somebody say, where, where are you where are you from? I hear an accent. Say, I'm from Jamaica. And say, what are you doing here? I'm here on vacation. You vacation here in this? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So we, that, that, that's the problem that we have. We, we have this embarrassment of riches in terms of talent and creativity. Yeah. But yeah. it is up to us, people like us, and the role that we are Rewrite establishing scripts. here. To, to, yeah. to, to, to write that script. It's not even a rewrite, God. It's a writing of a script. Because what yeah. we have been fed over the years is a bunch of garbage. But let's play some music. And um, again, if you're just joining us, you are in tune to Sunday Scoops. We're featuring the, the great Channel One studio and our in-house guests, our, the erstwhile Dr. Dennis Howard, the Jamaica's foremost ethnomusicologist. And um, I know you're going to uh, crucify me. Anthropologist. Uh, no, it's musicologist. And, um, <laughs> and we, we, we are blessed to have him in our presence. Let's play some music. We right coming right back at you, Doc. Yeah, in a sense, uh, but again, I I think listen at the time when Channel One was in its heyday, yeah, Joe Gibbs, and Joe Gibbs had, 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 a, had a particular sound, which was totally different from from Channel One. You had people like Derek Harriet still doing work. You had people like uh, 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 what name again, man. Uh, Harry G. Yes, Harry still G. Doing so, right. Aquarius was still yeah, doing work. Still doing work. Aquarius was there. Aquarius had a little uptown pretty boy song. Harry was tried to mo focus more like on the English kind of vibe. And so the roots of the music had its place right at Maxfield you know, Avenue. Maxfield Avenue. And, and, and the thing is, there's an interesting mix and transition going on during that period for the players. Most of them start off involving jukebox, including the brothers. Right. So the, the, there was, I think, the brothers. I think it was Ernest, Paul, uh, and Jojo. I think one named Kenneth. Right. Jojo. Jojo. Right. So I think it was four of them. One died. Right. In '75, I think it was Paul who died. Yeah. And so the the the. They, they they started with 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 jukebox like everybody else like VP like 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 uh, you remember one time Errol Dougley was the, one of the biggest jukebox, jukebox owner. Yes. owner Prince Buster <laughs> the same thing so they started out with jukebox then they moved to the sound system and then they moved to the studio and and with that people like Barnabas Soji and this guy named Ben up I, I I was trying to remember some of the names of some of the the, the guys who were also involved, which we don't call them name a, a, a lot. They were also part of the, 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 the sound system. And some, after a while, became musicians, like Barnabas, and engineering. Ben up became a producer. You know, Soji became producer and engineer. Still, to this day, he's one of the best uh, uh, live engineers. Soji used, used to make songs for me as a, when I... When I when I was producing at a, at a, at a you know, bigger rate at, at, than, than now. So it was this mixture of people learning the, 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 the thing. So the, this connection with dancehall is, is important. But remember we said the last time that Channel One wasn't a hardcore dancehall no. sound system. <laughs> right. It was a soul system. A soul set, right. It was a disco. Yeah, it was a disco. <laughs> You know, but, and it's interesting that they had a, a soul set, but they fueled the the sound, the aesthetic, and the and and the, and the, and the, and, the, and, the, and the songs for all of the root set that were around, like a Prince Jammies, a Emperor of Fate, a, 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 a King a, King Atani, and a, like a Tipa Tone or a Kenyatta. Uh, because the the the, the, the and, a, and a Jack Ruby, because remember you know root sound and tubbies, yeah. root sounds were few and far apart. The, and you it, you were talking about the, 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 yeah in you're the talking 60s, about that time. Yeah. Hi there, 
If you enjoy that clip, go on over to our website at yardmedia.com where you can watch the entire broadcast at your leisure. And while you're there, why don't you check out our other reggae music features? And before you leave, pick up some of our Jamaican reggae merchandise and hey, don't forget to tell your friends.